Hello everyone, here we are again, Robin the Sudoku Guy, with another tutorial. This is number 40. Before I show you what I have to, to share today, let me talk about a couple of things. First of all, I've had people say to me, why do you bother to put in little numbers? I can do difficult puzzles without having to put them in. Well, there's two things I'd like to say about that. First of all, um, if you can put, do, do, if you can solve the puzzle without putting any of the small numbers in, you're either very clever or you have a puzzle which says it's difficult but it's really not. Now if you remember rightly, back in, in uh, lesson number four, I mentioned that if you're doing really easy to medium puzzles, all you need to have in each cell is two small numbers. Um, but when you get to the stage where you have a really difficult puzzle, you've tried everything you can think of, do TMB, LCR, cross meet technique, 3x3, three three, all those advanced techniques, and you're still stuck, now what do you do? Well, I'm going to show you, because this tutorial and the next one are based on what I would call advanced uh, outside the puzzle. Let's have a look at this. Okay, in this particular situation, let's say just for an argument's sake that you've got to the stage where, wow, what do I do next? Well, this is the time you could probably go to use the outside the puzzle system or technique as I call it. Now, if you look at this puzzle, you'll notice that there are places where there's five or six empty cells in a row, column or block. And my suggestion would be this. Always look for, say, something that's only got three empty cells in a row, column, or block. Work those out first. Then go to uh, any row, column, or block that's got four empty cells, and so on, until you've got five empty cells. And on this particular tutorial, I want to demonstrate what you can do with five empty cells. What I'm going to do now is show you what you can do with, as just as an example to show you, um, in this case it's going to be a row with five empty cells, and it's going to be this one here. Step one, we look along this row and see, work out what numbers are missing. Well, there's a one, uh, there's not a two, so we put the two over here outside the puzzle. 3. There's not a 3 along here, we put that over there. Uh, 4. There's a 4 already. 5. There's no 5 along this row, so we can put the 5 in. Uh, 6 is there already. 7. Um, there's no 7 either, we put a 7 in. 8. Is there an 8 along here? No, there's not. 9. Yes, we have 1. So we have five empty cells and the numbers that can go in those five empty cells are, could be a two or a three or a five or a seven or an eight. Now that's step one. Now comes the part where a lot of people will say I don't want to be bothered doing this because I've got a computer that will put all the possible numbers in for me. Well if you want to go that route that's one that's okay but the purest Sudoku solver will say, well, part of the skill of solving Sudoku is knowing what numbers go in each, what possible numbers go in each of these cells. And that requires a little bit of brain work. It's up to you, of course. But I'm going to show you if you don't have a computer, if you have a book or something like that. And I use books a lot. So let's start with this cell and we'll work our way across. I say to myself, okay, is there one, yes, there is a one. There's a one there, there's a one there, so you can't have a one there. Is there a two? Okay, have a look here. Is there a two? Well, uh, here's a two, so you can't have a two there because you can't repeat a number in a row, column, or block. Um, and so we can't have a two. What about a three? Is there a three in this block? Is there a three down here? No, there isn't. Uh, is there a 3? No, I don't see a 3, so 3 is a possibility. 
four, we've got a four, five, we've got a five, six, we've got a six. If you've got a five and a six, uh, four in that row means you can't have a four there, five in this block means you can't have a five there, or a six. Okay, let's watch the, what the next, seven. Well, is there a seven in this block? Is there a seven along here? No. Is there a seven down here? No, there isn't. So we can put a possibility of a seven there. Eight. Well, there's no eight in here, but there is an eight down in here. So you can't have an eight. So what we're saying now is the possibility of, you can't have a nine by the way, in this cell only two possible numbers can go there, only those two. Let's do this one now. We already have a one. Do we have a two? No, we don't. We put a two in. Uh, do we have a three? Is there not a three in here? There's not a three along there. There's not a three down here. Yes, there is. There's a three right there. So we can't have a three. Four is spoken for. Five. There's a five in here in this block. There's a six in this block. You can, uh, can, what about a seven? Yes, we could have a seven. And uh, what about an eight? Is there an eight in here? No. Is there an eight down in here? No. We could have an eight there. Nine. We've already got a nine. So now we've got two cells done. What about this one here? Well, we have a one in this block, so we can't have a one there. We have a two in this block, so we can't have a two. What about a three? Is there a three down in here? No, there's not a three in there. There's not a three in the block, so we can put a possible three. Four. We've already got a four. Five. Well, if I look down, and there's no five in here. And if I look down in here, this column, there's no five. So the possibility of a five is there as well. Six, we've already got a six. Seven, we've already got a seven in this column. Eight and nine, we both have in this same column. So we have a possibility of a three and a five there. Now let's go over to this one. What about, um, mm, uh, what are we missing? We're missing a one. Well, we've got a one. We don't have a two. I don't see a two in here. So we put a two in. What about a three? Uh, we don't have a three down in here. So there's got to be a three. What about a four? We've got a four. A uh, five. Is there a five down in this column? We know there's not a five along here. There's not a five in here. So there could be a five. Six. Well, we've already got a six. Seven. We've already got a seven. Eight. We've already got an eight in this block. And we could have a nine. Is that right? Okay, we could have a nine. We can't have a nine. There's a nine along here. So, missed that nearly. So that is a two, three, and a five. Now let's go to this last one. We don't have a two. We don't have a three. We had a one. We can't have a one in there. We have a one in here too. Uh, three, three, uh, four, four. Well, we've got a four. We don't have a five coming up and down in here. Uh, so there has to be a five as well. And six, we've got a six. Um, seven, we've got a seven in this block. Eight, we've got an eight in that block. Uh, eight, uh, nine, we've got a nine across here. So two, three, five are the ones that go in that, in that particular, those cells. Now what we've done here is that we've, we've worked out what possible numbers will be there. Now, how do we know which ones? Well, here's the step that we go through. First thing is you look along the row of little numbers and is there a number that hasn't been repeated? In other words, it's only there once. Have a look closely. And did you notice this? It's an eight. In this row, in all those little numbers, there's only one place an eight could go, which means, yippee, which means that you can get rid of all these little numbers here and put a big eight in. There we go. Let's do that. Make it nice and neat and clean. So we're gonna put an eight in there. So let's do that. So we're on the way. Now we go to the next step. And you may say, well, what do you do now? Well, I could have an eight there and a there. 
But did, what is that going to get me? Well, it will get you there. Look, we got an eight there. We've got an eight there. We've got an eight there. So, if that's the case, if this is the case here, we know we have to have an eight down in here, there, there, or there. We can't have it there because of that way. We can't have it there because of that eight. So this will become our eight. We will be. We've got something as a result of finding that eight. Doesn't always happen that way. But what say you're now stuck? Just as an example, you're stuck. And you say, what do I do now? Well, here's the next recommendation. Go ahead and solve the puzzle the best as you can. And let's say you come across a new number that helps you. Let me show you as an example. Let's just say for argument's sake, just so you understand what I mean, that a five turns up here. What are the ramifications of that? Here we have a left, here we have a right. In this block, it has to be in the center. Now, it cannot be there because there's a five there, which means that this has to be the five. So let's erase the three and the five and put in a big five. Wow, getting lots of blue today. Put in a big five. So we've got a 5. Now what's the ramification of that 5? That means that any other 5 along this row you can get rid of. So we can get now, now we can get rid of this 2, this 5, and this 5. And just for fun, sometimes you can do this. We've got rid of the 5, we've got rid of the 8, and so on. Now, when you've got this, 2, 3, 2, 3, you have, of course, a matching pair. And we know from previous uh, tutorials and, and lessons that if you have a matching pair, any other 2 or 3 in this row can be eliminated, which means that this 3 can go and you finish up with a big 7. Okay, there's your big 7. Now, we know from that that a 7 could be there and there, but let's move on. Because we now have a 2, 3, 2, 3 left, we've only got two little numbers left, and we know that if you get one, you're going to get the other one. So we can get rid of this 7 now. So you're left with 2 or 3. Now, just say for argument's sake that as you work on the puzzle, you come up with a 3 here. Just to demonstrate what I mean. Now you have a top, we have a middle. Over here, we have to have a bottom. And that's the only place it can go, so that becomes a 3. Now, what's the ramification of that? Well, that means that this 3 can go, and you're left with a big 2. So we put that big 2 in, and it, like most uh, matching pairs, once you've got uh, the 2 there, we can get rid of that 2, and it becomes your 3. Now, what not this incredible? What we've done is that we have now solved that whole row based on outside the puzzle system. Now, next tutorial, I'm gonna do another one of these, but to show you how it can change again, be different. So, that's it.